Cucumber. It's a cucumber. No, no, it's a it's a skill worm. What? What? Yeah. Uh, look, it's got like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> look, it has bristles. Are you I sure? Oh, it does. Yeah, this oh. is a, it's not a cucumber, it's yeah. a scale worm. It's a big scale worm. It's huge. <laughs> How what? big do the squeal, scale worms usually get? Not for me. Uh, I guess it's pretty big. I don't know, no, normally you know, they're pretty small, like know. the ones that we were seeing on that sea star. Wait, stop. This is the same animal that <laughs> was on those sea stars? This in one's ginormous. This is in the same family. It's a different species. Can we get lasers on it to see? Uh, you zoomed in too much. Oh. Yeah. Zoom out a little bit. Oh, oh. what was that? Out. It moved mm. its scales Ugh. on its back. <laughs> <laughs> it's creeping me out. Nope. Nope. <laughs> oh, man. Bob's like, really not nope. into it. <laughs> it's like wanna, four inches. You want to put the lasers on it? Yeah. Uh. yeah. It's about four inches long. Well, at I'm least. I'm just imagining that, like, creepy crawling along the seafloor. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, I'd love to see that in the lab. I know you would. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good sample. Uh. You gotta find 10 of them? Yeah. <laughs> it's likely that there's 10 what? around here. <laughs> Play the odds. <laughs> That's not how permits work. <laughs> Look at its feet. What is that dot at the top? Do, yeah. I, do I want to know? <laughs> um, it's like an eye. Okay. Can they see? Um, they can detect light, but they can't resolve an image. Wow. Some, some polychaetes can, and uh, I think that's what that is that we're seeing. Ah, it's doing the thing again. <laughs> <laughs> it's moving. <laughs> I mean, it's alive. It's supposed to move. I, I know, know, but it's <laughs> weird. <laughs> I love it. I think it's great. It's gorgeous. It's nightmare fuel. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, I've definitely seen like more nightmarish things. This is actually pretty cute. Like what? I would totally get a stuffed animal of this. What? Oh, my. <laughs> Megan. Megan. <laughs> okay. I'll crochet you. I can crochet you. <laughs> Let's that zoom. <laughs> get Megan away from the <laughs> worm. <laughs> Talagorgia to the left. No. <laughs> There's another Oreo in the background. Oreo. <laughs> there it is. Yeah, let's go, let's go back to the Oreos. And they're like, <laughs> I kind of wish they had Oreos as a snack on the ship. We brought them on in stores, so they're on this boat somewhere. <laughs> <gasps> I hope they come out soon. Me too. I've been kind of craving them a little bit. We didn't have a dessert tonight, so. <laughs> yeah, what well, oh, was yeah, up with we that? Didn't. No we fruit. Sponge cake. Oh, did for dinner. That was for snack. <laughs> <laughs> We're spoiled on this ship. For <laughs> everyone watching, we eat a lot of food out here. <laughs> Someone's Courage saying now. channel one looks so bright and channel two is so freaky. <laughs> Can it's we dark. get a 20 meter move? One, three, zero. What's that red on the cliff there? Oh, That's it's just another, another anemone. anemone. Yeah. Kind of looks like a crab, but I believe you. There is a crab. See, it was, it's, that one's carrying oh, yeah. something. Where? I just went up the, the rock. Uh, I didn't see it. He's Maybe there, I missed it. Yeah, it, it was going as fast as it could. There it is. Oh, the red, the red crab. Yeah. Zoom so in it's on one of name. those homola Ooh, crabs. Oh, it's carrier. Look at them. And this one has an anemone. Maybe it's my carrying. Anemone. See? Oh, oh yeah. my oh. gosh, she's on it's the move. move. Now, does the anemone just live on him? No, it's carrying it. Oh, it's physically carrying it. Yep. Like, it could just drop it at any time. I mean, if it wanted to, yeah, sure. What where are the advantages of how? Oh, he's... Also, no. where is he taking it? He like, loves it. It's his <laughs> What does he do with it? He, he holds it. You've got a friend. <laughs> You've got a friend. It's pretty wild. So this is uh, La Moja. Oh, is he going to come on Bye. for a ride? Uh, maybe. Bye. <laughs> Can
can I keep this anemone? It followed me home. <laughs> Someone says, I don't often see Nautilus uh, at the zone. New adventures for you. <laughs> yep. So this looks like a good little ledge to explore. Yeah. This is a good depth. Yeah. I like this depth. Yeah, it's fun. It's got lots of fun, exciting stuff happening. You What's that thing on the bottom? Oreo? A fish? Yeah, that's another Oreo. Well, since you're our watch lead and Steve was on the last watch, someone says that Steve was telling us that he has had nightmares about sea pens, but more of a dream about losing samples, probably. So what are your <laughs> dive-related nightmares? <laughs> they want to know. Do you mm. have any? I honestly have not had any dive-related nightmares. Yet. None I, in of no. all expeditions? I mean, like real... Nightmares while I mean, you're sleeping. I don't know if Steve actually has real nightmares about I'll losing bet he does. samples. I'll but bet he does. <laughs> <laughs> he lives and breathes this stuff. Uh, no, I'm just happy when we get to the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> My nightmare is launching and then, re well, if, yeah, we've had a few of those. <laughs> yeah. Recovering before we get to the seafloor. <laughs> <laughs> Steve says my nightmare is forgetting to attach the sit rep <laughs> PDF to the daily sit rep email. We've gotten around that. We now have we're a lot using of emails out here. We're using links to <laughs> Google Docs. That either. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Is that another squeal worm? No, oh, I think don't that tell one's me. actually a cucumber. Oh, <laughs> oh that one's even bigger <laughs> than the other one. So <laughs> please say no. It's it's not a scale worm. I zoom in, Dave. Oh yeah, it's very cucumbery. It's got all sorts of little projections on it. Yeah. But they're softer and not as scaly. Like that one better, Jake? It looks yeah, like I one can, of those, I can deal um, with that one. <laughs> those water-filled toys that slip out of your hands. Uh, <laughs> I hate those. <laughs> 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 I know exactly what you're yeah. talking about. <laughs> Megan, someone wants to know uh, if crabs are not susceptible to an enemy poison, if they can carry them. Um, or do anemones all have poison? Well, uh, yeah, anemones have nematocysts, which are the stinging cells. They're basically like little tiny harpoons. Um, but like that wouldn't affect the crab because the crab has a hard carapace. But the way that crab was carrying the anemone, the stinging cells are on the tentacles, so it would never really get stuck. Huh. He can use it to sting other, other Exactly. <laughs> it, it holds that anemone and basically use it, can use it as a shield, okay. run around with it. Um, it takes care of the anemone, making sure the anemone gets enough food. So, you know, it's sort of a win-win for, for both of them. Can you come over a bit more to the left, Herc? Or like uh, more east, southeast. Uh, I was making moves one three zero. Yeah, yeah one three zero. One three zero I. We'll get down into some real uh, steep stuff over here. Bridge now. We. It's pretty steep. Yeah. Wow. Can we do another move 20 meters, 130? That's a drop off. Might see some nice cliffs or something. Another. Yeah. We saw the uh, those Oreos. We saw this big Madrapora, another uh, stony coral over on Baker. 
uh, slopes of Baker Island, and there, and it was huge. And uh, the Oreos seem to be using it to hide from the current. They were taking a break because of a very strong current there. So they were on the lee side of it, just hovering. That's pretty smart. Oh yeah, I remember that that coral that you're talking about. It was massive. Yeah, bigger than Herc. It was yeah. It was definitely the biggest vegetable I've ever seen. So hundreds of years old at least. Absolutely. Oh, he's so cute, the little yellow coral. <laughs> so small. It's so small. They start small. Yeah. <laughs> and they get big. It's a bebe. A bebe. Can I zoom in on Dave? Huh. Lots of shrimp. <coughs> Lots of shrimp. I'd say it's found a good perch. Yeah. yeah, this one will probably be pretty successful where it is. It just stands out like so much compared to everything yeah, else. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it glows. It's fluorescent almost. Yeah. The the gold coral's about the same color. Yeah, it's it's very bright. And there was a black coral just to the left hey, off the rock, in. yeah. I really like the color yeah, of the like yellow. Right of these in the colors. lower cor left cor corner. It's kind of weird looking from this. this yeah, that yeah, that thing. Megan, what kind of crab was carrying that anemone again? Somebody uh, loves him. It's a homolid crab, so a crab in the family homolidae, and its genus is Lamoha. Hmm. What is oh, this? Oh, there's something on it. A very a small shrimp. shrimp. A shrimp. Yeah, a little shrimp. So this might be a heteropathies. You want to get closer to it? Um. I was just like looking between the branches to see if there's smaller groups of polyps. You but it could be a. Uh, you want? Can get closer? If you could see it a little more um, from the front side, uh, okay. that you could be zoom helpful. Out, Dave. Okay, zoom in. Is the porch light on? I can put it on. It's kind of interesting how some of these branches are, are really long and some of them are really short. Yeah. Is it really pretty how it like flows in the wind from yeah. Hercules? <laughs> yeah, it's very uh, soft looking. Like a yeah. feather. Yeah. Thanks. For our viewer wondering, uh, it is 10 centimeters apart between the two green dots. It's a good way for us to measure what we're looking at. Bridge now. Can we get a 20 meter move, 135? Or about four inches for the, in English units.
One viewer says that they're watching with their 90-year-old dad. All right. Oh. And he wants to know, how is this possible? <laughs> <laughs> Science. <Yeah>. Science. <laughs> I still don't know. Hard okay. work and perseverance yeah, on this cruise. <laughs> perseverance. We've oh, had yeah. a rough Let's go. Look at that one. Flexibility. Yep. Can do attitude. Throw in a couple legends and you got. <laughs> okay, zoom in, Dave. There's only one legend. <laughs> <laughs> there can be only one. Uh, Sorry, Bob. <laughs> Oh, what's going on there? Uh, it looks like a Metallogorgia skeleton, and it's been colonized by all sorts of different anemones and brittle stars. Hmm. Yeah. Maybe some hydrozoan. So uh, did it die? Yeah, it's yeah, no more. It it's is no more. <laughs> but it's still serving a purpose in the yeah. community. It's like a high-rise apartment. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's a, quite a skeleton. Yeah. yeah, let's look at that black coral. Which one? The one right down the bottom there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Dave. Christmas tree. <laughs> it does look like a Christmas wow. tree. Oh, and it's got some squat lobsters. You want to be closer? No, I think that's good. That's a good view. It's perfect. Uh, great. Steve and Asako are typing, so stand by. We'll just kind of hold this. Are they going to say parantopathies or heteropathies? That's the question. <laughs> I think it's heteropathies, question mark. You want to, you don't want to get closer? Uh, no, this is a good view. Yeah, it's a good full frame shot. What's in it? Uh, those are two little squat lobsters. Right, I think we could zoom out. Yep, that was a good view. Moving on. You still got porch light on? Coming off. What's that guy down there? I don't know. An Oreo? Yeah. Yeah, they always seem to hang out right in the like peripherals. Oh, around the edge of the thing there? Yeah, they're always just like, oh, there's an Oreo. Oh, there's another Oreo. <laughs> there's a lot of them. All I can think of is Oreos now. <laughs> <laughs> no just gonna keep yep. saying Oreo. Yep. I brought up a snack with me, but it's a healthy one, so <laughs> Oreos sound much better. Speaking of there which, it is. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. And also, how much uh, farther do we have till we kind of hit where we are hoping to go in terms of the dive? Oh, uh, yeah. Now, what is the distance to waypoint 12? I don't think we'll, we got a shot at it. We're, but yeah, we're not going to make it that far. Oh, Ooh, that's a nice one. Wave point, point 12 is 850 meters. Hmm. That would be very ambitious. Yeah. <laughs> we have to really go fast. We got about two hours. 
We might be able to make it to waypoint seven. Do you want to see that one? Are you had your um, fill. I, yeah, we've, we've already looked at that. Want to see new exciting stuff. <laughs> There's going to be something really good. I can feel it. There's a question coming in on, do we ever take the dead coral skeletons uh, from the deep sea to take a closer look in a lab as a sample? Since they're not alive, does that go towards our permits or do we just not take them up? Um, yeah, we could collect dead skeletons and they could be useful for paleo coral studies. Um, you can radiocarbon date some of these coral skeletons and that'll give you an age. And you can also use that paleo coral to reconstruct um, past oceanographic conditions. So yeah, that could be a really useful sample to somebody studying um, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So we could collect something if we saw it. Uh, if we saw say a gold coral skeleton, that might be a really good sample because they live extremely long lives, and so collecting that could be of use. However, it would count against our sample collection, even though it's dead, because we are within the monument. So it would be like a rock sample. Hmm. <laughs> so Michael, I just, I just tuned in. What are the Oreos? <laughs> They're fish. <laughs> You'll hear us yelling them out when we see them. Yeah, the other common name for them is boar fish. They have these cute little flappy, flappy um, fins that they undulate. So it makes them very distinctive. And they're all around here. So stay tuned, you'll see some. These are some interesting shapes. Yeah. There's a little cup coral down the crevice there, probably polymyces. What's that white thing on the right? White thing. White. Zoom in, Dave. Oh, uh, on coral. the upper right right yeah. now? Yeah, that's a coral skeleton. Oh. Anemone? It's a cup coral. Cup coral. So this looks something like polymyces. Very it's a nice red one. I yeah. mean, it's deeper red than some of the others we've seen. Yeah, they come in all sorts of colors. We see them in like bright lemon yellow, this nice deep red color, a little bit Sorry. of a peach color. Uh, and that color is their tissue. The skeleton is actually a stark white. Hmm. So if this were to be a dead coral, it would be white. And porch light, coming on. It's pretty. Bridge now. All righty. Thanks. Yep. Porch light off. Can we do a 20 meter move, one, three, five? Can we kind of lateral over a little and look at the cliff? Like you're looking along the ridge, which is cool, but we might see some things maybe underneath or? Yeah, sometimes fish like to hide underneath these ledges. So you'll see things like orange roughies hiding in those cracks. I don't know why they call them orange. They look more pink to me. Oh, 
Well. Are you yanking on you? Uh, a little bit, yeah, you're right. pretty far. Pretty you're about hanging out. At the end of your leash. For our viewer wondering, uh, when do we stream? We actually are streaming 24 seven. Uh, so even if we're not diving with the ROVs, we do have something up on our website, uh, either showing what the ship is doing, different uh, camera views around the ship, um, or just the bow and stern of, of Nautilus so you can see where we are and what we're, where we're streaming to. Um, so yeah, our website's always on, so you'll always see something live happening. Um, but our dives are uh, sporadic. <laughs> um, they're not a daily thing or a weekly thing or a set timed thing. Um, we try and stay updated on our website status and on Twitter as much as possible so you know when we're diving. Um, but it's not a set time each day. It just happens when we get to the location and when weather conditions are right. Yeah, we'll be recovering at midnight local tonight and then uh, we hope to dive at, say, uh, 4 p.m., maybe a little bit later tomorrow. The weather earlier in the day looks a little windy and the swell is up, but uh, should improve in the afternoon. So we'll do some mapping. Mapping and swells, just what I love to hear. <laughs> right. That's interesting. And when we are mapping, you are able to see that live as well. So we will stream our uh, mapping view. Get a little bit out front. That's good. I just wanted to know if I was going to run into something over there. Yeah. Since we're here, yeah, maybe... turn the port slide on again. All right. What's this over here? Uh. What's that little fuzzy? You want to zoom in there, Dave? So this is a type of hydroid, or hydrozoan, called hydrodendron. So it's part of the Nideria, but it's not a coral. But it's like a coral-like animal. And in the branches, I'm spotting a shrimp. pretty neat. So it's kind of interesting. This particular hydrozoan has this coral-like structure where it has these branches, but it, it also can form multiple little colonies that are connected by tissue. So you're seeing branches arising along uh, the rock here with connective tissue in between. There you go. Move it on. Move it on. Yep. Bridge Can we do another twenty meters one three five? Wow. Ooh, that's a neat coral. Well, it's like a fluffy. <laughs> zoom in on that guy there, Dave. Getting a really great view from here. What is it? Hmm. I'm not quite sure. I don't see any nodes, so it's not a bamboo coral. Might be a chrysogorgid. Polyps look like kind of tiny, but the branching pattern's not quite right. Maybe it's a plexorid. Porch light. Done. Yeah, it's kind of under the overhang here, so we don't have great light. Yeah. 
It's a really interesting color, this sort of extremely light yellowish color. I don't see spines or sclerates along the body of the polyps. I don't see plating. In the still camera, I'm seeing a sponge or something growing on the floor below it. This cliff, maybe a, yeah, some kind of sponge. Clock, but not on the top. <laughs> that would be deluxe. <laughs> yeah. Gotta figure out how to put the camera. Is this not a weird, it, too weird a to place? Be doing this yeah, I do both. For yeah. sampling. That's why Dan likes the everything stick. Would you be able to uh, snip and slurp this? Or is this like too awkward? What do you want? For sampling? Snip and slurp. Oh. <laughs> oh, that is a sponge. I thought it was a rock with that was casting a weird shadow. Shadow. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> You're probably gonna kick me off of here when you move the arm, but it's okay. Give it a whirl. All right. That's a can-do attitude. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to kick me off of here. Yep. I can tell. But that's a great Argus view. Osaka does not think it's a chrysogorgid. No! Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that. <laughs> At least you were expecting it. <laughs> uh, All right, let me get at it from the other side. Here. Uh, it is a bit of an overhang. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the polyps are a little too squishy once we get a better look for a Chrysic Orchid. So, I'm just sort of whittling down what it might be. Probably a plug sword? All right, Jake, get that thing. All right. But we're at this depth where it could be something else. Want to zoom in, Dave? Yeah. That overhang is going to be tough. Yeah. I don't want to make it too easy for you. <laughs> you see it with Booble? I mean, I might grab a couple branches. That sounds good. Okay. I don't think there's any other way to gra get it. Something. I feel like you got something. Yeah. I just can't tell. I don't think so. Oh. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think you just stripped the polyps off that one little branch. Oh, 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 oh there was something. There Dang was it. Something. Should be plenty. Yeah. You oh, definitely, definitely have stuff. Yeah. It's a good clean it's, cut. It's in there, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah, zoom out, Dave. 
I can go uh, what, into flush five. In? Flush five. Um, jar five. Jar five. Jar five. Yeah. Yes. Jug is this going in? Five. Jug five. Zoom in, Dave. Oh, this looks complicated. All right. Slowly. Something went in. Something went in. I did yep. see that. Piece. Little, little piece. snip. Baby snip. Yeah, no. Might, uh, I don't know if that's enough. Steve says we're going to need at least half of the colony for a good voucher. A few polyps isn't really sufficient. Tough spot, but more would be helpful. Okay. Going back in? Yeah. He's a bit David. Spot to grab at. No, nope. that's as far as I can extend out too. So okay. I can. All right, suck it back in. Let me see. Let's see where we can go. What if you <laughs> broke off some of the rock on top? No, uh, that's not gonna budge. <laughs> I don't think. That works for you. All right. We're not very stable, are we? Oh. 
Yeah, how do you get half of it? <laughs> oh, well, that's pretty good. Ooh, it's not an easy spot. I know. <laughs> I don't want to waste too? too much time on this. Well, I'm getting too close. Give yep. it a shot. It doesn't look like the polyps are closing all the way, so it might be an acanthogorgia. Oh, oh rock. Which isn't super right. critical for sampling. Too close? Yeah, Sokka's saying not acanthogorgia. It's not? Okay, well, I believe her. She would know. Back in. Yeah, come at it from the other side, though. You have flipped the wrist. Oh, yeah. Down. Yep. Yeah, it's kind of back in a yeah, it's so tight. hole there. Yeah, it yeah, is. It's <laughs> it picked a good spot here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't see an easy way to get uh, yeah. half With of the that. overhang, I really yeah. I either got to come from underneath or which is tough. We got a good zoom. Got a tiny piece of it. Uh. I mean, now that the polyps are closed, it looks a lot more. It can't be. Can you zoom out a bit, Dave? I don't know. Maybe we'll see another one. Uh, yeah. Can you, can you zoom out all the way? Thanks. Just can't quite get the jaws inside yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, like, it's worth a try. Yeah. I could try that. I was pretty close this way, but. One more shot. All right, you can zoom back in. Oh, there you go. They get the coral cutters on there. But so the polyps are all on one side, and so acanthogorgids no, usually don't have that type of distribution. They're so close, Jake. Is it woggling around too much? Oh, turn that the, looks pretty good. Let me turn off the bender. Oh, yeah, there you go. Oh, that's not the coral cutters. Uh. Let's see if I can get it. Uh. Oh, it won't close. Dang rock. The snaggle tooths are a little too long. I think I'm able to get it. Thanks for trying. Are we going to count that tiny snip as a sample, or? Well, I think we could probably get DNA from that, right? It might be enough for sequencing. Maybe, I don't know. Oh, is that what Steve's talking about with a good voucher? Yeah. Hey, carrying on. Thanks yep. for trying. Yeah, yeah we'll call that a sample. Good. All right. That was 34? Yes.
Good try, Jake. I tried. Nice if try. only it was just a little bit bigger. Or yeah. Not in a crevice. Yeah. You wanted to go in the crevice. <laughs> <laughs> the crevice is cool. <laughs> Speaking of, somebody wants to know how these uh, formations are formed, these overhangs. Does anyone know? Well, this... This looks really soft, like really soft rock. Yeah, this is carbonate um, formed from ancient coral reefs when this uh, feature was above the surface or yeah. closer to the surface. A sea urchin? Yep, that was an urchin, all right. You want to look at it? Um, yeah, we, we could do a quick zoom. Don't need to linger on it. No lingering urchins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Dave. this is a sidereid urchin or a pencil urchin. This looks like a histus sideris. So Asaka says just a few polyps will help distinguish whether it's a canthogorgid or plexarid. So that, that'll be a useful snip. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely know when we see it which one it is. Yeah. That one just, I don't know, looked a little bit strange. So if we see another one, it might be worth sampling. Get that little star clinging to yeah. this. Pick yeah, a little brittle star. And usually there's these little... Um, Barnacles, goose nest barnacles. I see one on one of the spines. Those are pretty typically found on the urchin. That's good. All right. Okay, That's some on. good beauty shots. Need attachment points. <laughs> Can we look at the sponge? There's like this little star shape over yeah. on the left. That's that's weird. Yeah, that's weird. Hmm. It's a glass sponge, that's for sure. You can see the dictyonal framework. That's the way the spicules, uh, those skeletal pieces of the sponge come together. Sort of a crisscross uh, pattern, very regular. So you can see the little squares. So this is probably a uretid or a sponge in the family uretidae. Very small, so can't sample it without taking the whole thing. But that's a good view. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It'd be hard to get under there too. Yeah. yeah. You would have to go in there with the suction, yeah. just like we slurp can get it up. It with that. But All right. You good? Yep, we're good. All right. Megan, someone's wondering about the communication between the ship and the ROVs to make sure like we're all moving in the same direction. Do you want to talk a little bit about uh, your role as navigator? Sure. So as navigator, it's my job to make sure that the ROVs are moving forward on the bottom and the ship is moving forward on the surface. So I'm basically the go-between between our pilots that are driving the vehicle and the person on the bridge who is driving the ship. And so I tell them which direction we should be going on the surface in order to find the things we want to look at on the seafloor. And this is a liponema or a pom-pom anemone -pom <laughs> that we're seeing right now. Pom-pom anemone. -pom I like this one. Yeah, <laughs> they're pretty Russian. fun. I, I really like the name Liponema too. It just sounds fun. Eponema? Liponema. 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 <laughs> the girl from Liponema. <laughs> oh. 
there's an Oreo fish in the bubble can. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't read my gauges, Oreo. I can't. Get out of there. Oh, oh look at him in the camera. Uh. <laughs> These fish are all about photobombing. <laughs> I can't tell you how many dives I've annotated where it's like, bam, it's like, I can't see the coral I'm looking at. It's like, hello, I'm a fish. Oh, that was funny. <laughs> shrimp. Checking the gauges Whoa. for you. Long legged shrimp. Okay, I, I think I'm getting I up here. Yeah. Yep. Are you done engaging there? Megan, someone's wondering, do animals at this depth have eyes? And if so, do they see the spectrum of the ROV lights? Um, yeah, there's a lot of animals down at this depth that have eyes and can use light from above. So we're at 763 meters. So there is light getting down to this depth. So animals like these Oreo fish have very large eyes, which they use to capture the few photons that are getting down here. The photons are those little light particles that can penetrate the water. So there aren't that many, there isn't a lot of light down here, but they're making use of it and can visualize their environment. Uh, what colors they can see will depend on what kind of um, pigments they have in their Human eyes. Day. So humans have three. Um, that allows us to see the colors we see, but some of these animals only have maybe one or two. So they might not see the same colors that we see but they can still see stuff. How many do dogs see? I think they only have two. Okay, and then like butterflies have like eight or something? Yeah, oh, and um, say mantis shrimps, they've got like 12. Wow. Well. Right. So like imagine a color you can't even imagine and do that nine more times. <laughs> you get pulled a bit. Wow, wow that's crazy. Okay. We're falling off the ridge here. Yeah, the waypoint is a bit off the ridge, so and that's fine. If, uh, All right. um, do we want to follow the ridge or the waypoint? Uh, to the waypoint, yeah. A little okay. bit off the ridge. All right, coming off the ridge. Oh. Ooh, what was that? Shrimp. Sure. Bridge nav. Can we make a 20 meter move 135? How far is our next location from here? Not like in terms of diving, not in this yeah. dive. Um, our next waypoint. Oh, no, no, I meant in. Talk about the next dive scene. Yeah. It's oh, okay. north, it's at the northern edge of the uh, monument. Yeah, Wait, I, don't, I don't, I don't know the exact worm? mileage offhand. Yeah. Right. Over know. on the right, there That's was a little. Okay. But we'll be there. It's in the monument, but be there at the north afternoon. edge of it. Okay. You see it? Oh, up there. Yeah, that that little little whitish blob. What's that? Oh no. Tiger Mac. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that, that little gray spot. <laughs> don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Pretend you don't see it, Robert. I want to see it. If we see ten, I get one. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you know uh, we have to deal with those later. <laughs> I mean, I'll come hey, and deal with it. Oh. oh yeah, there it is. Oh. Mm -hmm. Are you sure? No, it's a sea cucumber. Sea cucumber. Oh, yeah, <laughs> 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 yeah this is a, a sea cucumber in the family Cynalactidae. It's not a scale worm. About the same size, though. It? It's the same size, and it was the same color. Same color. Yeah, 
as we get shallower, we might see some precious corals, like the um, corality, the pink corals. That could be cool. I'd love to see a gold coral, but we need to come up about 200 meters. In depth. I mean, we can do that. Well, I mean, like not in the water column. We gotta like really truck it up this hill. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at that uh, white coral up ahead. Zoom out a bit on high pack. So you yeah. can see waypoint seven. Well, that is a nice coral. Okay, can we zoom in, Dave? Nice. Part of it looks like it, like, is just growing the wrong way. <laughs> yep. So this is a primnoid coral. Primnoid. You, yeah. So that's the corals that have polyps that have scales along the bodies of the polyps and this one looks like the polyps will close downwards they're facing down so polyps are pretty small might be a paracliptophora I don't think this is an arella paracliptophora can get Quite large. It's a little, a little purple up there. Yeah. And then these uh, brittle stars that you're seeing are in the family Ophiocanthidae. Kind of spiny. Yep. Cool. One video is good. The yellow is another Enolapsamia rostrata. What about this purple? That purple could be one or two things. It could be a Stoloniferan octocoral, or it could be a Victor Gorgia. Uh, it only looks like a couple polyps, so it'd be hard to tell at this point of its life cycle. Um, but Stoloniferans actually live on rocks. They don't form their own skeletons, whereas Victor Gorgia does form its own skeleton. Okay, zoom out. Oh, it's a good zoom. Someone's wondering if sound acts differently in shallow water than it happens in deep water. Change in temperature, changes the speed? Yeah, so when you get these uh, changes in sound speed with depth, you get refraction of the sound. You want to zoom in again, Dave? You can see it better from this angle. Yeah, and that plays a big role in our navigation because we are using sound to navigate on the seafloor. So we make sure we calibrate our uh, sonar heads and our beacons so that we can have the best positioning possible. Yeah, so I think that might be a Victor Gorgia. It looks like it's got some three dimensions to it, but still, it's only a few polyps, so it would, it would be hard to tell. Um, we're seeing some more hydrozones growing on the rocks, and that is a cup coral called Polymyces. Looks great. Thanks. Okay. Back it on. Let's keep exploring. There's a lot of these cup corals. I've been seeing them all over the place. Yeah. It's a cool outcrop. Oh yeah, for sure. Animals really like this three-dimensional structure. Coralie, you had mentioned you needed a or were interested in a shallower sample. Did you get one that you think might be good? 
Yeah, so Steve said that they got one. Um, I'm looking to see if any look good. Um, a lot of this is like crusted. You can see this black stuff. Um, and maybe if we get a good, good view of something that isn't really sedimented, maybe in like the overhang or something, we could break off a piece. I don't know if that might be possible, but that's what Steve said that they're able to do. Okay. Oh, that's a nice one. Was there a depth that you were interested in? Um, this is a good depth. <laughs> Well, so I don't know how thick the crust will be, so it could just be wow. that it's like very thin and it might not be a good crust anyway, yeah. so. It's a good overhang. Oh, and a fish. Do you have time to face that cliff there and steady up for a zoom? Or are you moving on? Which, what? We're currently not moving. Could you kind of lateral uh, lateral right to face that cliff, Bob? Back to your right. The cliff? Yeah, to your right. It was uh, where those corals were. The little the overhang. The oh, overhang. The rock. overhang. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Like it was a good assembly. It's kind of be dusty over there because I just went by it. Down in here? Yeah. Oh, there's nice. a neat little sponge underneath there. Anything uh, in particular Another here? urchin down there, sponge. Yeah, let's see that sponge. We've seen all these other animals, but we haven't seen that sponge before. Okay. Zoom in, Dave. Oh, wow. A little fluffy. That's nice. <laughs> it's fluffy. It's nice uh, diversity here. Would yeah. uh, you be comfortable taking a Niskin bottle here? We might want to wait for the sediment to settle yeah. before we fire. That's a nice zoom. Yeah. Yeah, we're sitting in the, in the dirt here, too. That might be an alloplax type of glass sponge. That's a really cool one. Is that yeah. a uh, hydrozone just? Um, yeah, so those are the hydrodendron, gorgon gorgonity, gorgon something like that. Sort of, it's like gorgonia, but like, hard time pronouncing it. Gorgonoid You can you can try pronouncing it. <laughs> <laughs> are we hanging out here? Or are we um, let's see. Uh, the <clears throat> if it's too sedimented down where we are right now, maybe we could lift up a little bit and get a niskin up right above this. Okay. Zoom out, Dave. Well, there's a cute squat lobster on that Enolopsomia. Oh, did you want so look again? Cute. No, it's okay. <laughs> I saw it. I saw it good. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do you want to be on top of these? I'm checking with uh, Steve, but I think that would probably be good. We'd be out of the sediment. Yeah, that sounds fine. Yeah, it looks fine. like it's just moving above it. on. So. Yeah, that's a good spot. And have we taken any Niskins? Nope, they're all available. So you can put it in six. Niskin six. Niskin six? Is the bottom one? Way in the back, huh? Yeah. Move up a little bit. 
Oh, I got five. Five. Is that right? <laughs> sure, that's fine. They're all available. Oh, I should Don't pull on it. <laughs> <laughs> Quit pulling on it. Oh, you already <laughs> tripped it. Oh, all right. I, just, I didn't hear. It. I didn't hear if it tripped. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> no, one, no one told me fire. <laughs> <laughs> the, the top is connected. It's good to go. Okay, that was right, 35? Good spot. Yes, and that was Niskin 5, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. 35 and 5. You really, good. really tripped that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I tripped it that good. That was a legendary <laughs> trip. Yeah. <laughs> We have a good question of what is stopping deep sea corals from growing into a forest like their shallow water counterparts do? Um, food? Food is <laughs> one. Yeah. Um, they All do right, grow we, pretty uh, dense in some areas where it's just pretty crazy. Uh, but yeah, they don't they don't grow in that mounding form. But some of those majorpora does do so. Well, I think that's off track here again. Right so yeah, it's mostly food that keeps them from being, you know, extremely dense. Uh huh. All right, so we're gonna keep stepping towards seven. All right. Which is again off the ridge, which is fine. That's where we're finding some of these steep features, these overhangs. barren down there. Yeah. Going down. I'm cold. Yeah, maybe we can kind of zigzag up and down the slope looking for interesting overhangs. So Megan, you mentioned that this site or this depth does get sunlight. Um, would it be dark if we turned the lights What's off? That small floater. Yeah. Oh yeah. Can you catch the floater, Dave? <laughs> what is it? What is curled it? Up fish? Why is huh. it in a circle? Oh, it's a zoarcid. You sleep oh. on they do that. What? It's a uh, eel pout. What is it doing? <laughs> it, they yep. they turn into donuts when they freak out. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> let's Sorry, let it buddy. just go on its own merry way. Oh, ah. oh, no, nope. <laughs> no. So they can sense light, probably, or sound. Yeah, yeah, they're probably they usually donut before we get close to them. So I think they feel our vibrations before. Wow. wow. We get close. What does donutting do for them? 
I Seems like I'd make it more bite size. <laughs> <laughs> like a bunch of kids. I don't know. This is just what they do. It's the only reason I know that it's a Zoar <laughs> It's so is cute. <laughs> does this. Maybe the shape is, it looks less fish like. Maybe it's less recognizable to a predator. I don't know. But yeah, it looks bite size. What type okay. of fish is this? It's an eel pout. Oh. Eel pout. That was cute. I enjoyed that. <laughs> but once again, reminded me of Oreos. <laughs> I don't think we loaded any Oreos on when we took on stores. I thought, <laughs> I thought we saw one. Saw some Oreos. I thought we saw a box. There was one box there of was? Oreos, yeah. Oh. Okay, mysterious I'll go look box for them. of Oreos. <laughs> Gone missing. They're probably buried. Someone's secret stash. Smuggled away. You never know in like the, the I'm 95. Boxes. I'm 95% positive that there was an Oreo box. Mm -hmm. Probably destined for the top of a birthday cake. That would be acceptable. We have to watch the birds and eat Oreos. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm never watching that movie again. <laughs> yeah, too close to home. Too, too soon. close. Too <laughs> soon. Bridge <laughs> now. Can we make a 20 meter move? Well, One, four, zero. Yeah. This looks heavily sedimented down here. Also, the rock is going to look a little lighter color yeah. since it's carbonate. Yeah, it, it sort of, sometimes it tricks me where it looks very sedimented and then it ends up being very hard. Can we look at the black blob black on the blob left side? I, black blob. It's Bad? probably yeah. It's probably like a like a brown color, brownish red, but hmm. it just looked black from far away. Hey, okay, wanna zoom in, Dave? All right. Percent? No. This is a black coral. Black coral. <coughs> Got very jumbly branches. It's a nice color. Mm -hmm. It's kind of soothing color, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think that this, this might be a heteropathies because you have those longer branches on the outside and there's like shorter branches Fort down flight. the center. Very dense. Yeah. yeah, very densely packed. So heteropathies. And then there's two squat lobsters hanging out in there. <laughs> <laughs> they are in the family Chirostylidae. Might be something like Europtychus. It's hard to tell. The branches keep getting in the way. They're hiding in there. It's their favorite home. It was tan. It well, that's a good view. Thanks. I'm good. Move it on. Yep. Steve, uh, yeah, hexapathies already collected. All right, we already got this. Well, maybe we could start moving back up that uh, ridge, or ascending back up. Just it looked a little bit more interesting up there. Yeah, that's another black coral. And then the one up ahead is also a black coral. 
We're in the land of the blacks. <laughs> that was Hexapathy's Heterostitia. Uh, yep, we are moving. It was a one four zero move, right? Yep. But yeah, heading due south with Herc will help us send back up that ridge, and yeah, that's a good. As long as you got the tether. Someone's wondering if there are similar programs like ours that broadcast live marine exploration and dives and uh yeah there are uh there's not too too many but there are other ships of exploration and research that do stream their lives there's uh the rv falcor they they stream their live dives um okeanos explorer streams their dives um and there are a few smaller vessels that also stream so um i definitely recommend just kind of googling <laughs> research vessels that live stream and I'm sure you'll find some on YouTube or um, through Google. Yeah, NOAA is charged with leading the National Ocean Exploration Program, but there's plenty of work to go around. Yep. And so we're funded by NOAA through the um, OCEI. OECI. OECI. Ocean, Ocean, Ocean Exploration Cooperative, Cooperative Institute. Institute. Yeah. They're, they also fund my uh, research, so shout out to them for paying for me. <laughs> <laughs> yep, paying for you, paying for this cruise. Yeah, it's a good partnership. Yeah, love you guys. <laughs> <laughs> You're how I eat. <laughs> <laughs> but it's cool because different vessels go to different locations. So um, Okeanos can be in a complete different location than where Nautilus is and Falcor can be in a complete different location. So. Um, you're not all exploring in just one, you know, one area, which is nice to watch different dives. Yeah, Okeanos is currently in the Caribbean uh, doing a mapping cruise, so you can follow along with them there. Um, but they are not diving with ROV right now, so we're cooler currently. <laughs> 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 not that mapping isn't fun, because we're going to be mapping tonight. EV Nautilus and um, Ocean Exploration Trust, we also partner with uh, Schmidt Ocean Institute and NOAA Ocean Exploration uh, to bring resources for teachers and classrooms and science centers. Um, we do have a website since we all partner together. It's called uh, deepoceaneducation.org, and you can go there and it'll have resources, um, even if you're not an educator, but it'll show you which ship is diving um, and which ship is live, so you can check out, at least for these three vessels, um, who's diving and when. And that's deepoceaneducation.org. Can we zoom in right where to the left of the lasers? I think there's a star or sea star. Mm. How did you even see that? You have it's good eyes. It's a star. <laughs> it's a little cookie star. Oh. So the family is Goniasterity. And then we have this long legged shrimp, Nematocarcinus. Ooh, good picture. Really interesting. Yeah. Why is it called a cookie star? Because um, it looks like, you know, you just cut it out of a cookie dough. <laughs> That's the perfect <laughs> star. Because it looks yummy. <laughs> it looks yummy. You like, if pop someone right gave you oven. a cookie that looked like that, wouldn't you be like, oh yeah, it's perfect? That can't be the right reason. <laughs> I don't know. I just come up with a name. You're telling me you don't want to eat that star? <laughs> I want to eat a cookie, but <laughs> <laughs> if someone gave me a cookie that looked like that okay. star, I'd be all about it. 
That's true. Yeah, I good. would too. Moving on. I guess we are out in front though. Somebody needs to go downstairs and not come back until they bring cookies. <laughs> I didn't cookies. see any down cookies. there. There's just chips. There's no cookies, just chips. Uh, what are the odds we could try and grab one of those? One of the, those, what, rocks? Those yeah. Look, it looks like one piece. Yeah. yeah. But maybe a piece will break off, is what I'm thinking. Or hoping. Maybe that flat part in the back? Can you try to get one of these rounded pieces? All right, Jake. Uh -huh. <laughs> Make it happen. Yeah, Jake. <laughs> I think the thin ledge Coralie would break. Needs yeah, yeah, I think the thin <laughs> ledge might be the better shot, but 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 you want the uh, what looks more like basalt? Yeah, I can't use the ledge. Maybe the left side. That looks no. pretty, yeah. pretty, pretty solid. Uh -huh. oh. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I don't All right. Think we can move over. on. Yeah, that's a flat part. I don't think Corley can use that part. Yeah. That's fine. Too, too we can move on. We'll find you more. Could I actually, could you zoom in on that? I just want to see if I can see how thick the crust is. So it looks pretty thin around it anyways. What are we zooming on? Just a rock. <laughs> <laughs> hey! <laughs> it's one rock. <laughs> it was the the way you said it too. <laughs> <laughs> just a rock. <laughs> Rude. <laughs> Just a okay. rock that doesn't want to Does break. Corley's whole college career right now. <laughs> <laughs> All geologists throughout the world are gasping right now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's pretty thin. All right, thank you. We can move on. At about a one five zero. Yep. Fridge now. Can we do a twenty meter move one five zero? The fluffy one. Uh. This one? Yep. Yep, that's the one. Now this is a Chrysogorgia. It's not called fluffy coral? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's called golden coral. Isn't that what you wanted? I to want see? gold coral. Oh. Mm. Slightly different. Hey, zoom in. I might get a nice good view of the squat lobster that's hanging out in here. Hello, friend. There's two of them. They're waving. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hi. It's <laughs> waiting for something good oh. to drift oh. down. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Sorry. Rain on me. It's like when guests come over with dirty shoes and they walk into your house. <laughs> <laughs> we know what <laughs> Kelly's nightmare is. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, though? 
<laughs> now it's all dirty. <laughs> Do you mind if I reset your DVL? Uh, go for it. Cool, so, thank you. All right. Yeah, Sokka says, typical Chrysogorgia. Yeah, we almost always see these squat lapsers in the Chrysogorgia. That's a big claw, relatively. Yeah, they always seem to have one bigger side than the other side. Hmm. But this one, I think, only has one. Its friend has two, but this one only has one claw. Oh. Up here in the front. They'll regrow, don't worry. It just takes a little time. Oh, there's an encrusting demo sponge on that rock. See that kind of yep. whitish spot? This? Oh, yeah, that translucent, yeah. Spicy. All right, keep trucking. Let's keep going. Megan, someone's wondering what it means when you say bridge nav. Oh, I, it means I'm hailing the bridge. So when you want to talk to someone over the radio, you want to address the party that you wish to reach, and then you let them know who is speaking. So I'd like to talk to the bridge, and I am the navigator. So I'll say bridge, nav. And then the bridge knows that the navigator is trying to speak to them. Um, when they reply, they'll say, or they, if they want to speak to me, they'll say the opposite. They'll say nav, bridge, so that I know that they want to speak to me. That way, we understand who's communicating with who, um, and it'll keep things a little more straight and organized. Otherwise, it could get a little chaotic over the radio, especially if you got a lot of different party lines talking to each other. Mm. And say if the bridge was tuning into our SPL channel, which you're listening to, uh, that way they know that I actually want to speak to them and we're not just talking about really cool corals. Um, either Jake or Bob, somebody is wondering if we would to have a jackhammer attachment for the craft arm, could you power that jackhammer with the power powering Hercules and Argus? Have they tried that? Did they? Well, well, they had that yeah, your gripper arm with the drill. <laughs> so there is hydraulic power available for auxiliary functions. But the problem with things like jackhammers is you have to push against them and the vehicle is floating. So mm. it doesn't have a lot of, you know, <laughs> oomph yes. to push against. So yeah. You need yeah, more It tends to just bounce you off of the thing you're trying to jackhammer. <laughs> yeah, trying to do things underwater can be quite challenging. Was that a cucumber? Oh my god. It's definitely <laughs> a cucumber. <laughs> I'm saying cucumber. Yeah. It looks rounder. It looks a little too floaty for a worm. Yeah. Zoom in, Dave. Snap zoom. Please be a cucumber. <laughs> yeah. Da -da -da. Cucumber. cucumber. Perfect for your salads. Oh no. <laughs> 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 All right, that's good. <laughs> Let's get going. Hey, Lonnie, how's it been constantly writing all these Latin names Megan's throwing out? The spelling is very difficult. And I'm not <laughs> fast enough like to Google it and then we move on, but I'm learning. I'm getting yeah, if there. If you get close, you can it's figure it out. It's a learning experience. <laughs> as long as it like sounds like how you want it to, then you can kind of decipher. <laughs> yeah, well, I just type what it sounds like and then put a question mark next to it. <laughs> Smart, great. Get back to it later in the comments. <laughs>
What's Moving. that? Uh, yeah. dis shadow of two fish, maybe? That was uh, an Oreo shadow. Uh, Oreo. What's that distance to waypoint seven? Distance is about 163 meters. meters. So Coralie, all of this is covered in too much stuff for you. I like wonder if maybe, I don't know, I just feel like it's too hard to grab some of this stuff. And the stuff that I think we could grab is too flat. Mm. But yeah, like this, all of this is way too heavily sedimented for me to be able to do anything with. Yeah. What's this? Never mind. Uh, what are we looking at? I didn't see. Um, that rock, right? Uh, Carly, will you circle that again? It's right, like, there. Is that oh, actually it's a, a rock? Hole. It's just a oh, hole. Yeah. hole. But what is right above it? Oh, it's maybe still be a hole. What about that? Is that also a hole? Yeah, it's just kind of dark overhangs. Oh. Sad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you're not on SPL. Megan, not on SPL. There you go. Well, we're changing heading quite a bit. We're feeling some good rolls. Mm -hmm. Okay. What about this? That's definitely attached. Yeah. Go ahead, Bridge. Losing DP. Uh-oh. Well, in the hour that we have left, Nav, what do you think of uh, maybe just a zig to the south, southwest to come back up on that ridge and then come, and then we could uh, f from there go towards waypoint seven. Okay, yeah, we can try going back up the ridge a little bit. Um, yeah. We might want to hang out to see how this settles out next? with the DP. What? Uh huh. Um, the they're having numbers? some uh, difficulty holding minutes. position right now. Let's see the wind picking up, maybe. Swat yeah. After that. Okay. <laughs> Wind's about 24 knots. Oh. 25 knots. Uh huh. Back up there again. <laughs> maybe it's a squall. Probably. Oh, I see. I think once we get our heading right, um, we'll be able to move on. Looks like we're coming around to one two zero. Someone's questioning um, what our ship bandwidth is like with our satellite. Um, it depends, I guess. <laughs> uh, when we're diving, uh, a lot of our allocated bandwidth that we have specifically for dives um, is being used. And we also sp uh, allocate some bandwidth for our live ship to shore interactions to schools and science centers and community events. And then the rest of our bandwidth goes to all of us to use. Uh, so we do share uh, our Wi-Fi with everyone on board and there's about 48-ish of us on board. So 
Um, we're not allowed to stream videos or um, download big files. But we can check emails and text our friends and family. Check in. Dead stock. Yeah, it's a dead coral. So it's a piece of uh, Enolopsomia, probably. All right, our heading's looking good. Um, how about we try 210 to head up back up the ridge a little bit? Yeah, or uh, yeah, 180 should be fine. Okay, 180? Yeah. Cool. Bridge, Nav. Can we make a 20 meter move 180? All right, thanks. Someone's wondering if we can feel Nautilus rolling and pitching from inside of the van. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When we are holding position, it isn't as bad um, as when we're moving and streaming forward. But yeah, you can you can feel it a little bit. Yep, there's a little rat tail down there. Oh, what, someone's wondering, um, what depth are we trying to get to? Well, 200 meters was the... Uh, original endpoint for the dive. Uh, I don't think we'll get that shallow in the next hour or so, which we have, which is about all we have left. Uh, we are 740. We're just too much good stuff to look at. <laughs> What's that thing that like looks like a star, right? Above is that just part of the sediment? That? Yeah. It's a feather star. It's another crinoid. Another sea cucumber. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, it could be. Zoom in deep. Oh. So this is a pentametra crinus. Cause it's got five arms. I think I saw a pleurobrank up next to that sea cucumber. Well, there it is. Oh, oh, so cute. It's really <laughs> adorable. <laughs> we saw one of these uh, on a different dive, and they're related to nudibranchs. But the main difference is the nudibranchs have new tentacle or new uh, gills. So their gills are out in the open and the pleurobranchs, their gills are not out in the open for all of us to see. Oh, 
so cute. So fat. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of looks like Appa from Avatar The Last Airbender. <laughs> <laughs> it kind of does. Oh, it's moving. It's moving pretty gracefully. Yeah. It's gliding. So uh, some common names are like sea slug or sea hare. I'm sure there's more. I think it's cuter than a slug. Yeah, I was just about <laughs> to say that. <laughs> I know, it's so pudgy. I think it's just it's little, I mean, they're not little, but like the... <laughs> These eye things. antenna yeah. things. The antenna eye things, <laughs> yeah. Going I have to hop up this ridge. Cause I'm All right, coming up. Bye. Oh, a nice steep. Uh, yeah. yeah, look at Argus. Wow. Yeah, it's Ooh, that's a nice rock. What's that? What's this guy? Stalked something. Is it attached? That's cool. Oh, no, I is think so. It is. It looks to be. Megan, what is this? Megan. It's a tinafore. <laughs> I think it's But it's stalked. Uh-oh. It? So, it? uh -oh. so it's a cydipotinafore. Uh. And you can see the comb rows. Those are... Oh, yeah, go ahead. Oh, boy. Sorry, buddy. Uh. <gasps> oh. Bye. Wow. That was cool. Do you ever feel like a plastic bag drifting <laughs> through the wind? <laughs> Big cliff. <laughs> yeah. This is an interesting question. Somebody says, there's so many buttons to press in the control van. What is a button or a controller that almost never gets used? <laughs> hmm. uh, the button button? The, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, ejection seat. We literally seat. have a button button. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it just says button. <laughs> Do you not press the button? No, you gotta push it. It enables the buttons, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> <laughs> It just says button. Button, button, button. But you never press it? It's claimed that I asked for the button button. I <laughs> never button. asked for the button button. <laughs> does it do nothing? It or does something. It enables the button. But it it's annoying. All the it's annoying. And it, yeah, it lets you push these for auto positioning. But, like, why? <laughs> yeah. You have to push one button to push the other button. Yeah. yeah. If you if you yeah. have that button button not enabled, you can't click the other buttons. They oh. don't do anything. It's like a <laughs> like button buttons. paradox. <laughs> you can press them, but it doesn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> 
That could be frustrating. Yeah. I actually edited the code to get rid of it, and then when the software guy came out, the next time, he re-enabled it. <laughs> <laughs> Short-lived. Megan, your map right now is very confusing. Oh yeah, we are zoomed out. <laughs> um, the bridge has asked to see the shape of the reef. As we get closer to our recovery time, we're thinking about which way we would like to go upon our recovery. Mm. Uh, given the change in the winds on the surface, our heading would have us steaming into the reef. We oh. don't want to do that. Nope. So um, we might set up to tow away from the reef before we recover so we have enough space Put the wind on our stern. Yeah. So how far we got to go to do that? Um, we're discussing it now. Okay. Fish. A real fish. Oreo. Oh, another fish. French now. Jake, yeah, what's uh, the oh. longfish in the rocks there? Oh, yeah. I'll ask you after, Jake. Okay. Ooh. I'll be ready. <laughs> what are you? Well, it's a cuskiel. Oh. Nom, 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 nom. <laughs> Cusky. I'm going to look at the guide. Bye. Thank you, up against. Yeah. Okay, Jake, the question is, how much training does it take to drive the ROVs? So I figured I'd ask you because you're currently in the process of transitioning over to Hercules every once in a while? Um, well, when I came out as an intern, I flew the vehicles once for like a few hours. And so that was like a full cruise, like three weeks. And then the next came, time I came out, I flew it a couple more times. And then, you know, since then, I've, I've flown it more and more. But as an intern, you were able to drive Herc uh, Argus. Yep, it, you do it like steps at a time. So I was... Um, you know, given a chance to operate the manipulator arm in blue water um, on ascent and descent, uh, descent, and then uh, I was given a chance to fly the vehicles with like all the autos on at mm -hmm. first, and then slowly take off some of the autos. So basically, like we'll maintain uh, altitude and heading, and then um, all I would do is control like the X Y, and then we took off altitudes. So then I'd control the vertical thrusters. And so kind of like steps, and then you get, you know, slowly get the hang of it, see how the vehicle responds to different movements, and uh, kind of take it from there. And then it's, a lot of it is situational, you know, just uh, flying on like uh, like a cliff for the first time, or, you know, a flat bottom and doing transects. There's a bunch of different, like, operations. Mm -hmm. So Hercules is a pretty easy ROV to fly, really. It, it really flies nicely. It's sort of lightweight, so it it's nimble. Some of the bigger ones are more clumsy. Ooh, big fish or coral? Coral. It's that same uh, well, hexapathies yeah. Hex coral. Corley, someone's saying that they want to go to sleep, but they're worried that you're not going to get the rock. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you should stay up and watch us get this rock. <laughs> stay tuned. Some rocks over there. It's 40 minutes yeah, left. Half an hour left. <laughs> no, you should go to sleep. <laughs> sleep is important. I mean, this is all carbonate up here, isn't it? Yeah. But it has a thin layer of crust. Crust. manganese crust. Ah, so, okay. Yeah. So it could be of crust interest. Is crust. crust is crust. Yeah. I 
There is something purple off to the right. Ooh. Hey, you wanna zoom in, Dave? It's a crinoid. So when I'm looking at this animal, I'm looking at if there are pinules or like those little side branches on the arms up near the ends of the arms. And it doesn't look like there is. So this is in the family Xenometridae. Has very long Siri. Those are those little walking legs. So just below us, there's a kind of an accidental sample of opportunity. It's one of those scleractinian, yellow scleractinian corals that fell down. Uh, yeah. There were many of them, so we could collect that. I don't know if it's in a good position, though. There it is. Did we do that? I'm not sure. You don't have the scoop, so I'm not sure how you picked that up. Is that too big for the slurp? I feel like it would get stuck in the slurp. Yeah. Uh, what's, the, what's the consistency of this stuff? This is a stony Sorry. coral, so Megan, we're just talking about maybe picking up this uh, piece that fell off the cliff. This will shatter Put in, uh, in your hands, so like if you're gonna pick it up, you're gonna want to try to like scoop it. Um, if you can just balance it on the uh, the ends of the the claw, that's probably the best. Or if you can hook it, gotta, uh, gotta any gotta sort of pressure is gonna it. make no, it break no into no tiny scrunchy. pieces. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay. So if this is sediment, <laughs> it'll be easy to scoop <laughs> underneath it, but no it's probably pressure. not. So this will be a challenge. Oh, and we don't have we don't have the scoop. Yeah, we don't have a scoop today. We lost our scoop. But you might be able to hook the ends of the claws in there. Well, we got a, we got a friend visiting us. Uh, I think that's a conger eel. Eel, Bethy conger, maybe? All right. We live? We're live. Yep, we're live. We're live. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to turn off the bender? Yeah. Can we zoom in, Dave? Where's this gonna go? <laughs> Send it. You got space for uh, for this data? We have plenty of space. We can put them in the Ford bio boxes or the starboard bio boxes. Uh, Ford would be best. Yeah. Yeah. The quicker, the better. So how do we process this if it's fragile? Um, you can just, it's fragile for the manipulator, but in the lab, uh, 
you'll have a gentle touch with it. Okay. So using a rock hammer on it is not advised? <laughs> that, that is correct. Good to know. Making a note. Just move so slowly. All right, I'm going to kick it out. Yeah. Which side is it going in? They're both available, so whichever one. What? Closest. Yep. Is it okay in here? Yeah. Sure. Well done. It's not an hole yet. <laughs> That was sample 36. 36. So grip force was turned way down. It might have, if you're trying to grab rocks. Yeah. I also so just yeah. knew what was on. <laughs> should make sure that's. Yeah. What was it down to? Three. Yep. All right, that was so a true legendary sample right there. Yeah. <laughs> I say so myself. <laughs> <laughs> what we're going to try to do uh, in the timer, we, we do want to get another eDNA near oh. some oh, coral. Oh, oh, kill it, kill it, kill it. Oh. What's happening? Oh, the arm. My bad. <laughs> arm is starting to take off. <laughs> well, it's because I yeah. did what I should not have done. Uh. <laughs> You might be snagged on that blue coil. Yeah. yeah. I don't. I don't have control of the arm yet. Oh, okay. I hit the wrong button because we monkeyed with it. We hot wired it. I did the normal <laughs> thing, and you can't do the normal thing. I see. Yeah. <laughs> Force of habit. <laughs> you get used to it one way, and then it changes on you. I well, hear that. Just, we just did a temporary fix that mm -hmm. made this not the thing to push anymore. Another button that. <laughs> the button. The button. <laughs> button. Shouldn't be pushed. Yeah, so now it's going to be a bit of a challenge here, I think. Okay, Jake, you want to give me the crap valve? Yep. All right, it looks better. It looks 
like the winds have come down to about 15 knots. So That's helpful. Yeah, it's, it's good. So once we're ready to uh, move again, we'll, uh, we do want to get an eDNA near some corals or sponges near the seafloor, and then another about 10 meters off the bottom when we're starting to rise up. Um, we're probably going to, maybe around 11, uh, start turning the ship around and heading with the wind to our back and start try to stream out the vehicles. Do we want to check out that eel before we leave? Sure. Oh, he's still there. Okay, where is it? After right all this in that time. little hole. Here. Ah. Right in front of us. Let's take a look. <laughs> I don't see you. I see you. Hello. Oh, a shrimp. Yep, more shrimp. Oh, it's shy. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a uh, eel in the family Congridae, Bathy Eurocongr. It does not want to be on camera. No. Mm -hmm. Too. It did Comes earlier. <laughs> there it goes. All right, we can let him go. Someone's wondering why the sample box that we put that coral in, why does it say omega equals B inside of the box? Is that just the n number? of the box? Um, so there's a bio, there's a box B in the starboard bio box, and there's a, there was a box B in the forward, but they used to be called Lambda and Omega, and it was confusing some of the pilots um, and the uh, data loggers, because the data logger's like, well, on my sheet it says B, and then pilot goes, well, it used to be called Omega. So now we just have both. Great. Okay, yeah, we'll see. I'm curious to see. Because on our sheet, it actually says something different. Oh, does it? Yeah, oh, no. the A and the B are switched. Nice. So, <laughs> it's extra confusing. <laughs> but yeah, so those internal boxes actually come out, so like maybe they got swapped when they were put back in. Oh, okay. All right. I'd buy that, yep. Sounds like a logical explanation. Okay, so our next move is south? Yep, we're going south. Good. Bridge now. Bob's shoes sound wet. Must be raining. Can we make a 20 Bob's meter shoes move? Bob's sound wet. Zero. Must be raining. Thanks. Yeah. Wow. Oh, we. That's why we lost position then, I guess. But it's oh, good. We're getting oh, rain. Fish. What is that? I think that might be a hatchet fish. So silvery. It was, it's very fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Losing it. So everybody be happy to know it's raining hard on the deck. Yeah. We need oh, that. That's <laughs> <good>. yeah. <laughs> Our luck has turned. <laughs> <laughs> that was my wish for the morning. It's a nice, 
good drenching of the deck. <laughs> I wish it would rain water and soap. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think this is Crest Coralie? That's like right below us. She stepped out to oh. use the restroom. It looks crusty. You see how it's there's like that black rind? Mm -hmm. Can it be broken? Or are there crumbly pieces? On the lasers? Uh, yeah. Might want to check that out. You zoom there, Dave. I mean, it's the oh. color she wants, I think. Like that top piece right there. Yeah, I don't know if Me we can pick it up, but yeah, there might one of those pieces might be good for her. Uh, one of what pieces? Like that dark what piece. What we're looking at. Yeah, anything that has that dark. Yeah, but uh, they're attached, right? Yeah, yeah, they might be too attached. I think her hope is that we can somehow break something off. Mm -hmm. You want to try it? Yeah, we can give it a go real quick. And hopefully we have it in hand when she walks back in. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, rule of the dive says when the thing you're interested in, is yeah. uh, only available when you're not in the van. <laughs> I'm gonna get a little closer, I think. And she's back. We're good. We're trying to get to a rock. It's dark. We don't know if you need it, if you want it, but it's dark, so we thought you might. <laughs> dark and attached, but we'll give it a go. So where are we going? Down here? Yeah, like that Center dark. Me up there. Yeah, we were looking at this, I believe. Yep. We're up on top. Can you zoom in, Dave? That one, uh, below the lasers? I think it was more that oh, I was little thinking of that piece. little R1. Or is it yeah. this one? That one. Is, oh, okay. that? is that too coded for you? Uh, we'll see. We'll just take it. We've only taken three rocks. Two rocks. Two. It might be too stuck. That's solid. That's really it. Oh, oh, oh. Ah. oh. Look at that. Wow, look what how... What do you think, Coralie? Why is it so white on the inside? I don't know if that's crust or not. Yeah, I don't know either. It looks carbonate -y. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. yep. It's too white. That looks very white. It, like, it might be a very thin layer of crust, but I won't be able to uh, scrape that off. We Lose can it? leave it here. Are we moving? I think we're at the co-op. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. We'll leave it? Lose yeah, we it? can leave it. Oh, okay. But I'm happy to know that we did almost collect one. Mm -hmm. So that person can go to sleep now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's... Uh, Let's move on, see if we come across some corals or sponges. We'll take an eDNA. All right. There's a Slodenia in the Argus view, looking straight down. I can hop up there. bunch of loose rocks, but none of them look particularly crusty. When 
two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we might as well grab an eDNA here. I was like, yeah, yep. I see a number of animals. Just off the bottom? Yeah, okay. right. This is good. So Niskin 5 is the only one we've tripped, right? Mm -hmm. camera. Are we watching? Yeah. easier yeah yeah that loop is close to your wire bundle yeah all right we're going easy <laughs> is this four? Oh, that's three. three. Oh, green was uh the one you did right yeah green was five Okay. Popped. Trip. Yep. What number was that? Four? Four. 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 Sample 37? Yes. Sample 37. Skip. Then we'll get one more when we leave bottom. Is that that worm, or is that a cucumber? <laughs> There's a fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's going real under there. Under that ledge. Yeah, that, that's a cucumber. What's that sponge? Oh, that's another one of the... Those uh, ones I think might be an alloplex. They looked at it before. I might like to sample it. Yeah. Zoom in, zoom in there, Dave. And there's a Faria down the hole. A different sponge. The yeah. yellow thing? No, down no, the, there's like down a below. tubular looking one that has crisscrossing tubes. What do you think, Emil? Sampling this? Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have time if he can get the claw in there. Are we grabbing him at the claw or are we slurping? We might want to slurp it. Oh, the yeah. entire... Uh, Sponge? Yeah, we've seen a few of these. But I don't think we've ever confirmed this species. But the last time we were here, we saw a number of these, and I don't think anybody sampled it. Well, if you think we could get it with a slurp, sure. Too close. <laughs> yeah, if you're slurping it, it you make it too hard. To right. Yeah, better to be around the other way. <clears throat> yeah, 
that's probably good. Alright. Porch light on? Yep, it's on. Can you, uh, oh, that's panned over as far as it'll go, huh? Yeah, all I can right. look at it. That's alright. That, I won't look at that thing. <laughs> <laughs> that is not for me. <laughs> and it can go into jar six. Pulled up the spelling for you, Leilani. Thank you so uh, much. <laughs> which, uh, Give me two. Which jar? Seconds. Zoom in, Dave. Uh, which jar science are we going to? Uh, six. Six, four, five. Six. All right. Looks ready. Kind of yeah. Big. Right. Or do you want to try and oh. wait? Do you want to try and like? Just grab a hold of it with the suction and put it in the box. Thanks, Megan. That You're could welcome. be. Yeah, that would work too. Good solution. Okay, don't don't give it full beans. All right. Uh, That's thirty percent. Go up a little bit. Maybe. Uh, I don't think it's gonna work. That's very yeah. squishy. Very squishy. All right, that's, good. that's just going through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have some good photos of it, so mm -hmm. okay. now we'll get some good spicules. Yep, there it's in, it's there. in there. Yep. All right. That's yep. way softer than I thought it was going to be. It's Dubai. very soft. Yeah. not to push the blue So it would take us about 45 minutes to come to the surface from here. Yep. How far do we get to drag away, though? Well, we just have to start in that direction, but they'll have to turn this ship around. Then they, gotcha. they're going to have to be going into the weather when we do the recovery, though, right? Yeah, I think uh, this is a good place to just loiter. Yeah, the captain was, loiter. was hanging out in the, in the, on the mess deck. Zoom in here, Dave.
so that's another cup coral. Cup coral? I think, yeah. Or an anemone. It's hard to tell. I'm yeah. <laughs> like, I'm leaning yeah. to see <laughs> it from the side. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's also how I play video games. Um, I think that my leaning... <laughs> there, it's leaning. There, it's leaning for us. So is an anemone. A cup coral wouldn't bend like that. <laughs> all right. We all good with this? Good yep, with this we're good one? here. Oh, yeah, okay. thanks. Good one. Behind it, that small one, that was a cup coral. Uh. <laughs> there are a lot of shrimps. Yeah, so while we're waiting here, I guess we could just move a back and forth along the ledge, and see what's out here. That red thing. Yeah. Wanna get a zoom here, Dave? It's very red. Looks like an anemone. Super red anemone. Yeah, it's pretty. Anemone. <laughs> Good question came in on do shift members switch to different shifts? from dive to dive, or do you stay on the same one? Um, we stay on the same one throughout the expedition. So this one is the eight to 12, so everyone on this watch is on the eight to 12 watch, morning and evening. But if you're on multiple expeditions throughout the season, you can change your watch um, by expedition. So, but we're gonna be streaming ahead too, right? Yeah. <laughs> Quite a ways then, huh? quite a ways, right? <laughs> All right, come on, Dave, thanks. Huh. Some people like staying on the same watch, though, expedition by expedition. A little snail. Oh yeah, uh, the lake shell. Yeah. I like how on the top of its dorsal fin, it almost looks like iridescent or something. Yeah. Oh. oh. No. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Showing off. Ah, its mouth is moving. Is he eating? What is he doing? I don't know. I think... He, is he angry? Trying to scare us away. <laughs> Wait, are we going to go backwards? We 
do have to watch the wire angle though. If we go back up, like like we can only go so fast because the wire will start tending towards the stern. So. Yeah. I mean, you can back up, you just can't go very fast, yeah, so. Okay. Three, three, zero, yeah. Okay. Is there yeah, Dave? we'll go into tow mode, that's no big, it's just, we just have to watch out for the wire angle. Quite a bit. Thanks. And that's in the deeper water, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, but I mean, we got to come 100 meters up the bottom or something to, before we go. He's got barnacles on him. Well, what's the plan for tomorrow? Where are we going? I'm just listening to Nav. Oh, sorry. Hello. There's a lot. <laughs> Incredible amount. Oh, and, uh, and the lobster, squat lobster? Looks yeah. like it. We can always stop if it's, if we're gonna run out of room. We can always stop and go back up again, right? <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, backing up. I don't know how fast we'll be able to go. Maybe a knot, but I don't know. Yeah. Come on. If you want to factor in a time for that, though, like a, at a knot, the, the backup how long it's going to take for the backing up at one knot. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I 
had my calculator. <laughs> I have it in here. 1.1 or something like that? One mile. So we I got a plan then? I have it in here. <laughs> I only know because I Googled it the other day. <laughs> Units, yeah. length. Okay, how many meters are you going to go? Maybe this guy will take off. Looks like he's getting ready. Yeah. That'll be a treat. Yeah. Oh, the one below us taking off. He's crawling. Oh, oh yeah. Point, point uh, three nautical oh. miles. <laughs> Swimming crank. They're like graceful but awkward at the same time. So that's 0 0.32 nautical miles, 600 meters. Point three two nautical miles. Yeah. Well, we gotta. I mean, we gotta. Like straighten out. Man. Yeah. Gonna. Now, um, we're gonna get ready to recover and lift off the reef, just to, so you know. All right, everyone on our SPL, um, we are going to be ending our dive and leaving the reef soon, and lining up for recovery. So where are we headed now? We're going to go west, northwest, pull off? Yeah, we're going to pull off the reef to the northwest. Um, we're going to back up at least 600 meters off the reef or to wherever the captain feels comfortable. Uh, we don't want to be streaming forward nor toward any shallow water. And the captain plans to maintain this heading for recovery. Back off and then proceed east into the wind for recovery? That's correct. Okay. All right. You ready? Ready. Ready? So ready. we'll do a Niskin at 10 meters. We're going to go north. Yeah. Yeah, we'll come up. We're going to go northwest, so I want to be facing opposite that, because we're going to be, right, driving to, my, driving to the end of my leash. So, well, you have, yeah. Because you're going to be towing, basically towing us. I'm going to, so I got to come around. Yeah. I got to come around and take. Also, oh, we want to take out. a Niskin before. We will, yeah. Niskin well, we'll, it. we'll recover a different yeah. heading. Niskin but at 10 meters. We still need to be straight yeah. when, we're, when yeah. we're streaming. So it's just the same as on a recovery yeah, heading, okay. but that recovery heading. Yep. Right? Right. <laughs> I think you gotta go the other way. I gotta go the other way. Yeah, if we could go straight <laughs> up, yeah, maybe, but.
yanking on me, I can't oh. turn. We don't want to be on top of each other either, so I need to come up. I think we could probably do a niskin up here. I think maybe when we get set up. Yeah. I'm about 12 meters off bottom, MO, is that good? Yep. Can right. you uh, show me the arm? Yep. It's popped. Thank you. That was sample 39. Okay. Start coming out. Yep, ready. Coming out. How high? A hundred at least. I mean, is it, it's all down slope from here? Okay. You can start moving. <laughs> if we're going into deeper water, yeah. It's pretty steep, so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sort of do need to get the show on the road though, right? <laughs> I mean, really, there's, 
there's no reason for us to stop coming up, right? Yeah, well, we can always stop, like, you know, so if we just put it in the bank. Oh. We just have to watch the wire. Okay. That was a good watch. I'm going to uh, yeah. go offline to help set up the deck. Looks like we'll be a little bit after midnight. Yep, that's right. Uh, on deck after midnight. It's going to take us a while to back up to our safe distance before we can start recovery. Do you know how long that step will take? Um, we're gonna go about 600 meters at one knot. So about 20, 30 minutes. 40 minutes to surface, so. Yeah, it should, should line up. So, probably just after midnight. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. <laughs> it always it's always That's a little a bit different question. every You can every give time. it more beans right from the get go. I mean like right? <laughs> well not I mean go it does ahead, get Coach. us it does get us onto the reef faster though. <laughs> uh, no we have to, yeah, yeah, just tell them we're worried about the cable angle. If, it depends on what it does. We have to see. <coughs> what, what if they just bring the ship around? They didn't want to change the heading. This no. is what the captain wanted for heading. Oh, Roger. I don't know. I don't know how bad it's going to be. So it seems like it was around a knot before, but I don't know. <coughs>
Doesn't seem too bad. Yeah, this is as, you know, Argus has got its tend this way, then it's going to drag the cable. You could take your uh, your lateral and forward off. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so much fun. Looks hey like Dave, it's still raining. Can you uh, zoom that in more towards the shiv there? No? What, what can we zoom not, in? Not that camera. That's the uh, 180 camera. So uh, which one? Put camera mid up. Camera mid. That one? Yeah. OK. It's now starting to probably feel more of Herc, too, because it's pulling Herc. Yeah. No, I think we're all right. Is that what you want to see, Bob? Uh, no, you could zoom a little more, just so I could see it on the deck, like relative to the deck and the cross beams. Okay. You, no, not the whole, I don't want to look right at the ship because I can't see anything up there. <laughs> yeah, I know. The freaking lights. That's are good. That's good. There. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Is it raining out there? It, hurts it looks like it. Rats. That was pretty close. <laughs> Are you surprised? It's pulling pretty good now. Maybe it stopped. Uh, all right. Well, I'm going to walk back there and look at it. All right.
It's a big, big, we got a big pitch, I think. He's out there, so. Well, he's got his foot. So. <laughs> it's hard to tell what a Bob Hustle is. <laughs> yeah, it did. Probably, yeah. Yeah, I would yeah, say Bob's gonna say to move or either slow down or or uh, change. Here he comes. Yeah, it's gotten closer as soon as you went down there. Yeah. Yeah. If I start spinning around with Herc, I can, right? He's in coming or bringing my head around. Yeah. 
We did our best. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's gonna be a full wrap after, probably, in the 6-8. <laughs> Not today. Not on this cruise. <laughs> it was worth a shot.
So for anyone watching, uh, we are a bit quiet on SPL as we're letting the NAV team and ROV team do what they need to to recover uh, the ROVs after this shallow dive. Our next dive is planned for uh, tomorrow, sometime after 4 p.m. local time or Hawaii time. So stay tuned here and on Twitter for updates.
Stop it. It does not. You can drop the iris down. Oh, ouch. Oh. Oh, they put labels on it. That doesn't cause Herc Zeus to freak out anymore, so that's a good thing. Well, yeah, we're patched around and added an extra frame synchronizer. Though it, though it, it did it once uh, earlier today. I'm not sure why. It's coming right in, though. <laughs> it's going to be great. Look at it coming in. <laughs> yeah, you can... <laughs> now it's probably going to go past the line and go over here. <laughs> Is the camera racked back? <clears throat> we 
know, stowed is the... Huh? What? Uh, you could probably, you could tuck it in some, yeah. Maybe not. Did they struggle last time? Uh, yeah. Huh. Yeah. Okay. It, I don't know. I mean, we came right in pretty quick, so maybe we could go to one and a half. So. One and a half knots. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> we'll leave it alone. Let him let him wrestle with Argus. Who cares? <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> Did I say to reduce thrust? <laughs> huh. Oh, I turned the tilt of the camera up. Yeah. Well, I don't like having the camera hit the deck. <laughs> It's not black, it's got blue sparklies. <laughs> yeah, it's a low light camera. <laughs> All right, there's something. As long as there's a few pixels there. Is that enough there? <laughs> How's that? Sure. <laughs> Oh, they're giving you sparklies over there. Nice. <laughs> you you got to do it on Argus. <laughs> <laughs>
Tammy's back there, isn't she? <laughs> They kind of been wiggling around some. They change. Yeah. <laughs> Almost there. Seventy meters. <laughs> Seventy meters. <laughs> Five zero meters. Go ahead. Where are they going? Heads up, we are not planning on reducing thrust on recovery unless requested. They're changing it up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was looking too easy. <laughs> so far, so good. So far, so good. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how easy it is from the table. Wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty zigzaggy. <laughs> Everything is awesome. <laughs> Interesting DP feature.
Oh, can you turn off the sonars? <laughs> I'm over here. <laughs> Looking great. Look at that. Soviet main deck, Kirk is moving slowly to the left, starboard side. Copy that. Why, well, yes it is. <laughs> yep. We are thrusting to try to straighten it out. You can quit driving up, you're on the oh. surface. <laughs> I thought I hit my bio scan enable. I thought I turned it off. That is a challenging Argus grab there. Well, but we're also getting some swells right now. Yeah. So it's of swinging course. back and forth. Of course. You know why Herc's down there? Because we went down and then we went back up. I would I would dare to say that Argus is probably straighter when we're going faster because there's more drag from her, you know. Probably, but then that Well, we hit the, yeah, the, yeah. Then it does the, the. It doesn't matter how fast you're going. <laughs> Oh, we didn't get our full uh, recovery set up here. Huh? Did we? No. Now I'm going off the starboard. Yeah. They're zigzagging back yep. and forth. We're really doing a zigzag, yeah. Oh, oh let's pretend. So you go auto heading too. Just, uh, right now? Yeah, I mean, so you're not, so you don't, you're getting pointed kind oh, of okay. way. Oh. Yeah. 